this is not stained glass. The black part is wood and it's filled in with resin, giving it that stained glass look with no glass involved. Now I've been scroll sawing for about 15 years and you know, I get bored easily doing the same old scroll sawing stuff. So I'm always looking for new and interesting things to try. And ever since I found out about resin, I've been wanting to incorporate it into my scroll sawing, but wasn't quite sure how. Uh, I've been, you know, looked on YouTube to find some ways to do it, but nothing was really satisfying me as to, to what I could make stained glass kind of effect with resin. Now I can, you can pour into a solid backing, which is fine. Again, it gives a piece color. <laughs> But uh, this is what I wanted to achieve, and after much trial and error, I did manage to get this first piece out uh, that looks pretty good. And uh, you were probably wondering how I managed to pour resin into something without a backing, and that's a little trick I will show you later in the video. I'm going to show you in this video how to uh, do the same thing with this little hummingbird here, and uh, the little trick I'll show you later on if you stick around. First of all, we have to cut out the hummingbird from a quarter inch piece of Baltic birch plywood. So let's get to that. So I've cut the piece out and uh, had a little bit of a problem when I finished I realized uh, a lot of uh, the back had lots of divots and chunks pulled out of it I don't know why that normally doesn't happen but it did in this case so I put some wood filler in and hopefully between the glue and the paint uh, it'll solve the problem now this is quarter inch uh, and you could probably just as easily do it out of one eighth inch uh, this is also quarter inch which as you can see gets quite thick so one eighth inch would work just as well and you probably could use less um, less resin as well so this one is one eighth inch and as you can see it still works pretty good to contain it and next step is to paint it I'm just going to use a matte black but you could do any color you want now that we have our piece painted Make sure you do both sides because if you want to hang it in a window or something, you want to have a pretty back side. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to attach it to a sheet of acrylic sheet or plexiglass. 
This is a two millimeter thick acrylic sheet that I just found at my local big box hardware store. And we're just gonna use, so you can use whatever kind of glue works best for you. Uh, I found this uh, spray on stuff that doesn't actually spray, but I found it thin enough to uh, make sure it gets everywhere and easy to spread. And it's purple, so it's nice to see where, it, uh, where you uh, put it on and then it dries clear. You just want to make sure you get lots of glue on every single bit of your piece. Okay, when we're done that, get a little sheet of plexiglass. about any uh, overflow of the uh, plexiglass over the edges. We can, we can sand that down later. We want to make sure we clamp it down very thoroughly. So that the uh, resin, when we pour it in, won't leak out through to the other spaces. So let me see if I can get some bigger clamps in the middle here. I guess just the more clamps the better. And make sure you get uh, as much clamp down as you can. Just use all the clamps. Use all your clamps. Okay, so when you're satisfied that you think everything is touching and now you just let it dry. And till the next step. Resin time. So I use this art resin, uh, which is uh, non-toxic. You don't need to have a respirator with it, but other resins you might need a respirator with. So just make sure you follow the directions. There's also different directions as to uh, what ratio you have to mix the resins and the hardeners with. So again, follow the directions. This is just a one-to-one -one mixture. The way I do that is I just use water first and I measure a certain measurement of how much I want and then make a mark and then at the same amount again, make another mark. So however you want to do it, that's up to you, but this is how I do it one-to-one. -one. And you definitely make sure you want to wear gloves because this stuff is super sticky and hard to get off. You can use, uh, there's various resin tints you can get. This is actually the stuff that comes with the art resin tint, um, but again, you can use whatever tint you like. I have uh, printed up another version of the pattern and laid out where I want the colors. And another trick is to do the colors lightest to darkest, because that way if there is some leakage underneath, then the darker one will hopefully cover up the lighter one. Now this part is super important. You need to mix it up for a full three minutes and make sure you scrape the edges and sides thoroughly. Hey Siri, set a timer for three minutes. Okay, three minutes and counting. Okay, so we've got the first color done. Next is to get rid of the bubbles. With a little bit of heat magic. We have to do a few times as the bubbles come bubbling up to the top. And now we wait for this one to mostly set. It doesn't have to be completely set, just enough so that it's, you know, kind of solidified enough so that when you do the next color, it kind of acts as a dam, prevent more leakage. So we'll come back um, maybe tomorrow and do the next color, which will be the orange around the outside. Uh, now that the yellow is mostly tacky, it does seem to be a little bit bubblier than I was thinking, but I'm wondering if that might be because of the temperature. I know resin doesn't like cold, so something to keep in mind, um, just make sure you're working in a warm area. Another thing too is, as you saw, it was kind of hard sometimes to pour, you know, accurately. So if you have a problem with that, or especially getting into small areas, you can use like a little syringe. We got, I got these from giving our cats pain medication, but you can probably just buy it on, um, 
Amazon or wherever as well. And even though this looks really dark in the cup, it's going to look different when you pour it down in a shallow area. So you might want to do a few test drops to see if you have the shade that you want. Um, as you can see, it goes a little bit from darker, lighter to darker here. And uh, I think I'm going to go for this one here. It's not too bad. product. It's uh, not too bad. A uh, few things that uh, annoyed me a little bit was um, the some of the colors had some like minor tiny little bubbles in there but that just could be because my resin is old and it could be expired or just because uh, I was working in cold conditions but uh, if your resin is new and uh, you're working in the warmth it should be fine. Uh, the plexiglass I actually did end up taking the plexiglass off of this piece whereas my first piece I left it on. Uh, it looks actually pretty nice with it taken off, but it was kind of scary to peel it off because it didn't, you know, it kind of stuck in places and I had to take it off in chunks. So that's up to you if you wanted to try taking it off or leaving it on. Uh, I did also spray it with a coat of varnish, which I do not recommend. It really just left a film on there that didn't look nice. Uh, but uh, this is uh, the best I could uh, method I could find so far for doing this kind of thing. If you want to try it and find something that works better, let me know. I'm always learning. Uh, I'll leave a link to the description in the description below of all the patterns I used and the you know some of the supplies I used like that. And uh, just yeah, let me know what you think and if you try this out yourself. And just have fun.